Hey! In my last video, I've shown you my HP 250 system and holy fuck, you guys really love that video. The 250 definitely is a forgotten machine. But this time I have something that doesn't even know what it is itself. This is some sort of Motorola 6800 mini computer system. When I got this back in 2022, I was really intrigued into it and really really wanted to get it going. I even started making video back then. I then sadly had to put it away because I just couldn't figure out how it works. But I want to change this today and I really want to start reverse engineering how this system works and I want to figure out if we can get some sort of console output or just, just like anything working out of this. So let's get straight into it. Actually I can't get straight into it, I am gay so I would need to go gay into it I guess. Brain farts with mutts. Okay, so I've put the camera so you can see inside. Um, so what we have here is uh, we have a CPU board with a debugging card on it. And that's actually everything I know about this system because there's a little sticker on it and it says everything is inverted. So if the lamp's on, that means it's fine. Then you have the address selector for some address, not even know what address this is. And then you have RAM CPU error, RAM error, CPU error, signature mod this something, module disabled, signal disabled, watchdog, and then two empty ones. Apparently, the uh, so, so I would assume the watchdog probably blinks if you turn it on. Then you have two edge connectors on the CPU board. We will take a look at that later. Then you have some sort of ROM board. There are a lot of EPROMs on this board. Then you have an IO board. There is just tons of AIO here and then there's a serial board with four serial ports. So let's take out the boards and take a look at them from above. Those are at least not so hard to get out unlike the ones from the HP 250. Seems to be unnecessarily hard. Ah, bitch, you have it. Only a little bit inconvenient. Okay, I repositioned the camera and now we can take a look at the boards. And uh, this is the CPU board. So it has that funny debug connector. You can uh, take this off if you want to. I'm not gonna do a bad, but you can. There's a, probably a reset switch, big patch panel. Then here we have the Hitachi HD68B09, which is a Motorola 6800 microprocessor. That's probably an IO port bus like a bus controller. So you have eight output or 16 output lines and then a bus. Little side note, that's the bus controller. It has four of those on it. So this is just buses, like as you can see, plug in here, right? Then we have a bunch of EPROMs, some, uh, I think this is some like probably microcode. This is most likely RAM or something like that. So it's, it's quite a simple system. So this is the CPU board. I think it should possibly be like a, a single board computer kind of like deal. Next, we have the ROM board. So we have something that looks like a battery, some EPROMs. Those could be EPROMs because um, this is bank A, bank B. So this is probably EPROMs. I should be able to dump the ROMs. I don't have a ROM programmer, but I should do that. Then, as I already showed, the I.O. module is just an I.O. module. There are the Hitachi HD 468B12. Those are just an I.O. port for the 6800. We have four of those with probably some latches or something um, that just connects to the I.O. bus, which you can plug in a ribbon cable here for probably some, you know, external things, hard drive, something. And then last but not least, there is the serial card and I've actually reverse engineered quite a lot of that just to figure out how to hook up a connection. So I hooked up a connection to port one, but I sadly had to realize that there's not much happening. This is a Motorola MC68B50 serial controller, RS232 controller. So I think we need to reverse engineer a lot of that to figure out how it works. If you look at that port here, it's a 10 pin double sided edge connector with a notch between the fourth and the fifth pin. Now look at that connector. It's a 10 pin double sided edge connector with a notch between the fourth and the fifth pin. So could it be that this is the main serial port instead of one of those four. 
that will be my first bet or my first thought. So what I now probably first want to find out is um, if I can hook up a serial console to this port. So I took a look at it a little bit and as we can see the pins of that connector go to that connection block here or that uh, jumper block. So I suppose or I think that this is some configuration panel which we also have on here in like similar size on the assumption that this connector is the same as that connector. If we can go with that assumption, then we could reverse engineer how that is hooked up to the connector. I have not documented how this is because I have actually figured that out already at some point, but I forgot about it, of course. Okay, so I printed out the data sheet for, uh, for that. TX data is uh, pin six. It's this pin, right? And I think it goes somewhere over here. One, two. This pin. So pin, one, two, three, four, five. On the pin five. Then I printed out the MC1488 data sheet, which pin five is the input. So the output is pin six. So this one, and then it's pin one, uh, like the first pin that isn't ground or a voltage. So let's hook up my, my terminal to this pin and ground on the receiving end and just try to get anything out of it. So I've gotten the computer back onto the table, put the CPU card in, only the CPU card, and um, we need to now uh, make a cable because of, of course I, I don't have one. Okay, so I trace back where the pin should go according to the diagram. And now I should be able to plug it in. Of course I'm not because the cable is too big. The connector is too big. Good, okay, so this uh, might have worked. So let's plug it in. And that, <laughs> I don't believe it, this actually worked, what the hell? Oh yeah, well, fair. It did work in that case. Well, fair. Then let's get a terminal. I'm gonna plug in the computer. And uh, if I push this button, It is doing self-checks and no, definitely not so happy. So it may need more boards. Let's plug in this board. Okay, now it doesn't look unhappy. Yeah, now it doesn't look unhappy. Now it looks like it is doing something. So like the, you know, the, 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 the errors are all out, but the watchdog isn't blinking. Now the watchdog is blinking, um, but I'm not receiving data. That might be because I plugged in the wrong cable. By plugging in the other cable and turning it on. Okay, but there is no serial output. Well, that would have been too easy, wouldn't it? Then we have to dig deeper into this. Let's actually also make sure that my ground actually is grounded. So, because it could as well be that my ground isn't ground. This should be a ground. This should be a ground. And pro oh no, okay, it is. Okay, good. So this is grounded. So our first try wasn't really successful. I also didn't really expect that. So what I now try to find is it says copyrighted here. There's a brand, another, the same brand, and then some code. Um, so if I can find 
yeah, here also some code. If I can find just uh, information on this single board, that would be optimal. Okay, so after quite a lot of searching, I found out what this is. This is a Motorola XOR bus system. I found the Motorola XOR bus specification and luckily they actually have a standard how you connect a serial interface to an XOR bus machine. Now there's a lot of like flow control or something but definitely, definitely we found out that transmit data is on pin 3. If we take a look at that, 1, 2, 3 is that exact pin here. Now. When you look at the thing that pin 5 is received data, I will be the pin next to it. 3, 4, 5. So what we could do is we could actually take our terminal and connect the pins just like that in a row. But 1 is actually not a ground. So, instead of the one for using for ground, I'm going to use it and use the four as a ground. Which is one, two, three, four as a ground. That should be working. I am honestly not really sure how, uh, if I connected the transmit and receive in reverse order. Um, if so, uh, we need to change that later. Okay, so I again hooked up the terminal and you can see it's definitely doing something and when I turn it on... So nothing is happening at the moment. I wait till the watchdog is actually starting to blink. Now the watchdog is blinking. Nothing is happening, okay. What if we change around, switch around the red and the orange wire, changing the receive and transmit. Actually, yeah, it's, that's, whoa. Oh, some weird shit's happening. Ah, okay. As soon as the system gets grounded, it now works. Well, we get no output, I, I, I digress. And when I turn it off, Random garbage comes out. It sends some random garbage. But that could be also just, you know, actually be random garbage. But that means it's not like completely dead. I could of course think that it is, uh, it wants some synchronous communication, which would then mean that we need to hook up a lot more stuff. So we need to hook up RTS and CTS. Yeah, modem control, perfect. So that should now, Use modem control. So when I turn it on, maybe it will work. This is not. This is not work. Okay. So I don't know. I I don't. I'm not really sure if that that actually is the problem of the terminal now. Um, I will go around and uh, I will consult some Discord knowledge to figure out more about this whole situation. Okay, it's a couple of days later now and um, I have started doing some debugging and there's the following kind of thing. We assume that those four chips here is actually static RAM. Those two are two ROMs and I think those are the ones that the system boots from. Those are probably the bootloader slash bootstrap ROMs. And so I have come to the conclusion that the hardware most likely fully functions. I am pretty sure that the problem that I am facing is that this is an embedded industrial PC system. Motorola actually encourages uh, to, to build or, or makes you build your own software for this system. And I think this is exactly what has happened here. So the ROMs on this card probably contain code 
that does something for some application that I don't know because I never seen this machine when it was running. So it was just a machine that does blink a bit. And so what I kind of need to do now is to dump the ROMs, push them through a disassembly program, and then I need to find what, um, what, what, what code is on there and try to reverse engineer and figure out what all of this does. The problem that I'm running into it, I'm kind of running out of time. I have to admit, I do not own uh, EEPROM programmer or reader yet. Um, I know I could build one with an Arduino and stuff, but that's just additional effort that I just not really have time for right now. So I actually bought myself one, but that's still in the mail and I don't think it will arrive on time. So disappointingly, I cannot show you an end result here, uh, but I'm asking for your help. Do you know anything about this Motorola XOR system? Do you know anything about those cars? Please let me know. Um, also, I'm probably gonna post the code as soon as I have it on the Discord. So make sure you join the Discord. And also, I want to take a second to just say thank you. Thank you guys for being here. Like, uh, after last video, my uh, YouTube channel just exploded from, from like 200 to like 2000 subscribers. And I've got super many views on my uh, on, on that one video and people are leaving comments and being excited about and joining my discord and it's just it's been such a good time for me because of that and I thank you all so much you are really helping me a lot getting motivated or being motivated to, to, to continue doing this so if you like this video then please consider leaving a like and if you haven't already subscribe and so I'll see you next time and until then, have a good time. I'm out. Goodbye. What? Such a beautiful brick wall. I would love to stare at brick walls all day, but actually, no, let's not do that. I recommend against staring at brick walls. Anyway, let's put the brightness up so you can, guys, guys can see shit. Wow, this looks shit. I need lights. I don't have lights. Well, sex balls. It is what it is. My brain goes <laughs> Oh my god, I fucking, that was disgusting. What the hell? What the fuck am I doing?